Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we are making an oversized sweater with straight silhouette, stand-up color and partial front zipper. It has dropped shoulder line and long oversized sleeves with cuffs. Suitable fabrics include jersey knit, rib knit, sweater knit. I chose this French terry from Robert Kaufman, which is fairly lightweight. I do wish it had a little bit more stretch, but as the top is quite oversized and has a zipper, it's not a deal breaker. Depending on the width of the fabric and the size you want to make, you will need somewhere around one and a half meters. I ordered two just in case and I'm left with enough to make a pair of matching shorts. You will also need about 40 centimeters of interfacing. Bias interfacing tape, preferably with a stitch in the middle. A zipper that's about 27 centimeters long. Silicon tape for reinforcing shoulder seams depending on how stretchy your fabric is, and the matching thread. Now the instructions suggest using an overlock machine for some edges. If you don't have one, no need to panic, you can use a combination of stretch and zigzag stitches. For stretchier fabrics, you can join the pieces with a stretch stitch and then finish the edges with a zigzag stitch. Same applies to the hem. While a cover stitch machine will provide the most professional finish, a twin needle and a regular sewing machine can do the job as well. If your machine has a zigzag function, you can use the twin needle with it. So you will need five spools of thread in total if you're using the overlocker, or just two if you're good with regular sewing machine and a twin needle. We will also be using the zipper foot to attach the zipper. This is specialized foot that allows you to get up close and personal with a zipper for clean, professional finish. Most sewing machines come with a zipper foot as a standard accessory, so it is likely you already have one. Before interfacing the main parts of the garment, I recommend doing a test run on a sample to check for shrinkage or any other unexpected naughty behavior. This is also a good time to adjust the iron's temperature, determine if steam is a friend or foe, and fine-tune the fusing time for optimal results. Interface the neck facing, reinforce the area where the zipper will go, and the side seams of the color. Once that's done, cut 5 to 7 centimeters along the center front. On the front piece, baste the silicon tape along the shoulder seam on the wrong side of the fabric if your fabric is uh, stretchy. Mine is not, so I skip this step. Sew the pieces together. I'm using a four thread overlocking stitch, but again, as I mentioned before, if you don't have an overlock, um, an elastic stitch or zigzag stitch or regular machine will do. On the assembled front and back pieces, stay stitched along the neckline edge from one side of the zipper all the way to the other. Place the lower edge of the collar piece against the neckline edge of the assembled front and back pieces, right sides together, aligning at the edges. Pin in place, matching the notches and shoulder seams. So, securing stitches at the beginning and end. Press the seam allowances open on the front neckline area. On the right side of the front piece, mark the cutting line for the zipper with chalk. Align the end of the cut with the bottom stopper of the zipper. Pin in place. A 
attach the zipper using a zipper foot, securing stitches at the beginning and end. Cut along the marked lines for opening, stopping 1mm before the edge. Precision is key here. Place the zipper tape with the right side facing one of the seam allowances so the top stopper is at the collar fold. Pin the zipper, aligning the 5mm seam allowance of the frame with the stitching line from the perpendicular seam. Pin the zipper, aligning the 5mm seam allowance of the frame with the stitching line from the perpendicular seam. Baste by hand and attach one side of the zipper using a sewing machine with a zipper foot, securing the stitches at the beginning and end. Remove basting stitches and press the seam. Trim seam allowances at an angle about 2mm from the stitch line to reduce bulk and do one nice final steam. Finish the facing piece with an overlock if you're using it, stitching along the shoulder and bottom edges from the right side. Press shoulder seams of the facing piece to the wrong side by 1cm and trim the corners that are sticking out. On the facing piece, mark the cutting line for the zipper on the right side. Make a cut about 5-7cm deep from the neckline edge. Place collar and facing pieces right sides together, aligning at the edges. Pin in place matching the pressed seam allowance of the shoulder edge with a control notch on the collar.
so backstitching at the beginning and the end. Press the seam and press the seam allowances open. The pressed seam allowance of the shoulder edge of the facing should be caught in the stitching. Turn facing to the right side, revealing the lower seam allowance of the zipper attachment. So, securing stitches at the beginning and end. Place facing with the right side against the wrong side of the zipper. Fold color along the fold line, right side inwards. Pin and baste by hand, aligning the 5mm seam allowance with a perpendicular seam. Pin the pressed edge of the color in place and baste by hand, overlapping the color attachment seam by 1 mm. Remove basting stitches and press. It is important to note that in this pattern, the armhole length on the front and back pieces is longer than the sleeve cap length. When pinning, evenly ease in the armhole. Place sleeve pieces right sides together at the open armhole. Align edges, matching notches and pin. So, press and press seam allowances towards sleeve. Place back and front pieces right sides together, aligning at side seams. Pin, match notches and sew. Depending on your fabric, when sewing the side seam, you might want to spread seam allowances of the sleeve attachment in different directions to avoid bulk. Press seam and press seam allowances towards the back. Fold cuff piece along its long edge, wrong sides together and press. Trim half of the seam allowance to 5mm to avoid bulk. Align cuff piece with the bottom edge of the sleeve, right sides together, matching the cuff seam with the sleeve side seam. Pin matching notches and distribute sleeve edge ease along the cuff and stitch.
press seam allowances towards the sleeve. Finish the top's bottom edge with a flat seam. I like to mark a line along the bottom edge at a distance that is double the hem allowance and then fold the hem allowance to the wrong side, aligning the raw edge with the marked line. Press and baste by hand. Sew so double stitches on the right side along the hem either by cover stitch machine or twin needle on a regular machine. You want to ensure stitches capture and finish the raw edge. Remove basting stitches and do one nice final steam. Ta da! I like how it turned out. My oversized sweater is ready to take on the world. Happy sewing and see you next time!